I am just trying to think. If I took Joe Klein and Keith Olbermann and put them into the same room, would you have all the computing power of every brain on Earth? They're in one room! I don't know. But they could quote Shakespeare out, damned spot out. Oh, it would be fabulous. Now, tomorrow is the State of the Union speech, and I'm so excited. I think America is waiting to see which approach the president take. Will he admit his mistakes like everyone demanded George Bush do for so long? And now they seem to be over that. Or is he going to play the blame game? I'm going to take the blame game for 500, Alex. This president just can't take blame for anything. As a recovering alcoholic, may I say I recognize denial. He's suffered a few losses in New Jersey and Virginia. He's lost Ted Kennedy's seat, and that's a big seat. Then, as an alcoholic, he kind of is, I mean, what, what is this? It's like coming to in the bathroom on the floor, naked, for like the 15th day in a row. And they're like, what am I have a problem? I have vomit on my lip. That's what that's like. Plus, Republicans now have a good shot at winning Obama's, Biden's, Reed's, and Dodd's Senate seat. Yeah, that's the next step in alcoholism. That's like an alcoholic with whiskey shooting out of their pores and still saying, What? So I got whiskey shooting out of my pores. What? I got it under control. It's that damn George Bush. I'll tell you that right now. You see, the White House now has blamed Bush at least seven times since yesterday. It's really what progressives do. I want to play a, come with me, I, you're going to love this. I want to play a new game called Compare and Contrast. Yeah, I got to play Richard Dawson. I wish I had somebody here to kiss. Let's start with Hugo Chavez in Venezuela. Here he is. He has managed to stay in power since 1998, and he's done it because he's a good man. He's got the progressive, revolutionary blueprint. He's following it. Remember, game compare and contrast. Saw something uh, from Rochdale Research. This is how they describe Chavez. He says he constantly attacks the money classes, charging them with creating the nation's pro problems. In doing so, he keeps the population in a constant state of anger over the fact that they have to suffer now due to the actions of the rich and those people over there who were once powerful. Come on, let's get them. Then he acts uh, by penalizing the rich, by taking their wealth, taking their businesses, demanding that the masses must be paid. Every dime these people stole, he will return. Got it? Remember, every dime they stole, he will return. He constantly attacks the right of opposition to dissent. He argues that people must be quiet. So, got it? There's a failure, then he assigns blame, then he punishes those people, and anybody who disagrees, he silences dissent. Chavez comes into power and he starts implementing socialist programs, trade restrictions, current restrictions, shocker, all these things, yeah, not working out for him. So there's inflation, there's crime, rising unrest. His response, step one, assign blame, show me. Capitalism, yes. Here he is in Copenhagen in December. Quote, our revolution seeks to help all people. Socialism, that's the way to save the planet. Capitalism is the road to hell. Let's fight against capitalism and make it obey us. He specifically goes after the fat cat bankers here. They have airplanes and private airstrips. I'm asking that bankers who do business with the money of the people getting rich get thrown in jail. He goes on, how can you have a state bank and resources for the people deposited in private banks? That's called treason. Private banking equals treason. Oh, you crazy cat here with a big ribbon on his chest. Next step, the plan. Punish them. Penalize them. How does he do it? Show me. Oh, spread the wealth? Kind of. Tax and nationalize. Chavez went after large estates. Even took large farms for land redistribution. I know you're going to find this hard to believe, but even in his utopian progressive state, 
there were still people who said, no, I think this is wrong. So how does Chavez deal with them? I say, show me, shut them down, name call, demonize, jail. The country's oldest private TV network has been closed down because it was causing moral damage to society. Tried to put his political rivals uh, into, uh, in, into jail. Just last year, he started a campaign of threats, fines, and intimidation against the country's only remaining opposition TV station. He said they were trouble. He's also shut down 34 radio stations. Oh, yeah. And yesterday, a student died in a free speech rally. But that probably didn't make the action Chavez news at five. It's only a guess. By the way, all of this stuff, all of this stuff to progressives, it's important. Because Chavez has done great things. I've heard it from every Hollywood celebrity. I'm, in fact, your new FCC diversity czar, he's commenting here on the incredible revolution. Watch this and the correction. Wow. In this way, Chavez uh, really had an incredible revolution, a democratic revolution. Okay. Correction. An incredible revolution, a, a, a democratic revolution. I'll explain that in a later show. Chavez, Venezuela sounds wonderful, but remember the game, compare and contrast. Got it? Policies fail. Assign the blame, punish them, silence dissent. Let's go over here. Compare and contrast. Obama's policies, the stimulus, 75% say it's failure, didn't work. Unemployment, double digits, health care out, cap and trade out. You got it. Obama, who's he going to blame? Is he going to blame himself? we got to assign the blame. Show me capitalism. Fat cats. I did not run for office to be helping out a bunch of uh, you know, fat cat bankers on Wall Street. My commitment is to recover every single dime the American people are owed. I refuse to let America go back to the culture of irresponsibility and greed that made it possible. Back to an economy with soaring CEO salaries and shrinking middle class incomes. Just like Chavez. Except Obama replaces capitalists with fat cats. But it's the same thing. People making more money than they need. Okay. So we know who the enemy is, right? Now punish them. So what do we do with them? We tax them. We semi-nationalize them. We take over GM and say to the bondholders, screw you. This is the deal you're getting. Chavez took their land and, and gave it to other people. He socialized the evil banks, the oil industry, even the cement industry. Obama and Congress. And I think when you spread the wealth around, it's good for everybody. This liberal will be all about socializing. Uh, um, you said too much. Will be about. Watch him. Watch him. Basically, mm -hmm. taking over uh -huh. and the yeah. government running all of your companies. We know that the free market is nonsense. We know that the whole no, point don't. is to game the system. No, it's not. We know this is largely about power, that it's an adults-only, no-limit game. We kind of agree with Mao that political power comes largely from the barrel of a gun. Do we? I don't. So let's try out the Chavez thing, because that's working out well for Venezuela. And for those dissenters here, like me, oh, well, we're not being jailed, right? But they're name-calling and they're demonizing. They're doing everything they can, just like Chavez is. Don't, don't, don't just stand there and, and say you're not mopping fast enough. Don't, don't, don't accuse me of having a socialist mob. You know, those of you who are watch, watching certain uh, news channels that, you know, on which yes. I'm not very popular. It's true, it's not, he's not. And you see folks waving tea bags around. But a lot of their news programming, it's really not news, it's pushing a point of view. And the bigger thing is that uh, uh, other news organizations like yours uh, ought not to treat them that way. Mm. Isolate us. Remember the pattern. Failure. Assign the blame, punish them, silence dissent. I mean, that silencing dissent, that should bother at least the old-timey Americans. If you remember history, in the words of George Washington, may I remember the words of George Washington. If men are to be precluded from offering their sentiments on a matter, in other words, you've got to be able to say it. If you're 
cut out of the system, which may involve the most serious and alarming consequences that can invite the consideration of mankind, reason is of no use. The freedom of speech may be taken away, and dumb and silent we may be led like sheep to the slaughter. He's only the guy on the bill that's worth very little, George Washington. But, as Newsweek told us, we're all socialists now, and, and maybe we are. Hmm? Maybe we're just too dumb, according to Time magazine, to know what we should be for. Oh, but they'll tell us.